I'm here with Mark Dixon, founder, CEO of IWG, the world's biggest flexible offices group. Last week, I believe um, you mentioned in your results, uh, record revenues in, th in the 30 years of the business, or maybe more, I'm not sure. Um, what do you put that down to, Mark? Well, record revenues we've ever achieved in 35 years, exactly. And that's down to a continued transformation of workplace and how people use real estate, how companies use real estate as more and more move to hybrid working, flexible working. Okay, and have you seen any differences we was through the pandemic now, we think, we hope, um, in terms of the way people are now beginning to go back to the office? Is that changing at all? Certainly you've talked a lot about how things have changed. The last year or so has it changed again? Well, I think this whole narrative about people going back to the office is the wrong narrative. Because this sort of idea that everything's going to go back to how it was is not the case. Technology changed the workplace. The pandemic got everyone using the technology. And so people are going back to offices, but those offices are not in central business districts and inconvenient locations. Those offices, if they go to them, more and more are near where they live. The problem here, the elephant in the room, is the commute. It's not this sort of go back to work, go back to the office idea. So more and more companies, more and more people are saying, well, actually, I can do my job. I don't really want to do it from home, although some can. I want to do it, I want to work with a community of people near where I live, that's what I want. And that also is what companies want because they can hire better people, save them an hour or more a day, and also it costs a lot less to cycle down the road than it does to commute for an hour. So it's a transformed world, it won't go back to what it was, and technology in the end changes everything. Look at retail, and it's changed the workplace forever. Okay, well, another question just to ask you, the business has obviously changed a lot, focusing a lot more on managed agreements and, and other things. What should we see this year from IWG? What in particular things are you gonna be targeting? Well, what we've said is continued rapid growth. Um, last year we signed more than 850 new buildings. This year we expect to do at least that. Um, we're growing all over the world. I mean, a lot of it in the United States and Canada, but all over the world we're growing. We're adding some new country, countries. We've just added Montenegro, very small country, but it's still another country. Um, and you know, we continue to grow the network. This is a platform play. This is about network. This is about coverage. It's not about real estate. It's about convenience for people, about where they want to work and what they want to do. So lots more growth and, and we hope another year of record revenues. Okay, now I'm going to pass over to look at you from Business Simo. Uh, thank you. Uh, in France, uh, IWG has made a, a big part of its strategy to go into secondary cities and go in uh, third periphery uh, in Paris and in smaller city. Uh, how does that fit into your overall development strategy in France and in Europe, this idea of maybe uh, conquering uh, the, the regional scene uh, in a way? <laughs> It's a global strategy, it's not a French strategy. So in every country we are in, we're growing national networks. So, you know, basically um, people want to work everywhere. In the smallest communities in France, in the deepest valley, the highest mountain, there will be people that want to work. Uh, some will work at home, but a lot of them want to go somewhere and cut the tie between home and a workplace, work with other people, not be with their family all day seven days a week it's a it's a very it's a psychological thing it's an efficiency thing it's a pr productivity thing so um you know this is what we're doing in france with lots of new towns and small towns being added to the network we expect in france to do at least 2,000 locations today we have 200 okay so it's very rapid growth into france um french corporations and French people. Workers really like the idea of working locally. It works well in France for French workers. They do not see any benefit in commuting one hour a day on road. The road system's good in France, but it's still 
one hour, one and a half hours each day. And it's expensive in gas, and it's expensive in, 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 in time and, and, and public transport if you use it. Much cheaper than most other countries, by the way. It's quite a good deal in France, but it's still expensive in time and it's inconvenient. So um, France is, I think, in the forefront. It's one of the leading countries in Europe for this change. And that is because French com companies are much more focused on, on their teams, their employees' well-being. It's a much bigger thing in France than it is in many other countries. And something that I thought interesting IWG did in France, well, last year you announced a partnership with Perial yeah. uh, to uh, create factories by Perial and Regis, if my memory, memory serves correctly. Uh, the first, uh, the first uh, space was opened, uh, I think, a couple of weeks ago yeah. uh, in Le Bourget. Yeah. Um, how does that approach with a more partnership, uh, a, a bigger partnership with investors like Perial Uh, fit into your uh, development strategy going forward, uh, obviously in France, but also across the globe. In France and globally, it's an important yep. part of the strategy. So we've had meetings here at MIPIM, and we have them all year, with more and more uh, property investors, institutions, insurance companies, larger companies that see uh, that hybrid working and platform working is going to be a big part of real estate in the future and they are saying we want to have that within our portfolio in the same way that we have uh, other amenities in the same way that we look at the design of our buildings and the architecture and so on we need it and they're putting it in so we have a lot more perial style arrangements that are accelerating our growth okay just two very quick questions then at the end just to ask you been some talk of a New York listing. Is there an, any update on that than what we last heard? And we work. What's the latest in your mind on that? Are you still an opportunity for you? I know you've spoken before of taking on a few of those um, those uh, offices. I think, look, just dealing with WeWork, I mean, there's a lot of talk about WeWork, but just to look at it, get it into perspective, we are more than 10 times their size today. And, um, and yes, there will be opportunities that will come from um, uh, the WeWork portfolio as they restructure it. And we're, you know, we're alive to those, we're looking at those. Um, we wish the guys at WeWork all the best. You know, this is going to be a huge market. It's expected to be a $2 trillion dollar marketplace in the future. So there's lots of room for us and others. So it's not a one only strategy. Um, so, you know, that's WeWork and they, you know, their model wasn't quite right and they suffered for it. Um, in terms of where we list, at the moment we're listed in London. Um, we're going through steps to change how we uh, talk about our company. Yeah. So we've moved to dollars. I mean, most of our revenue is in dollars. And we were getting hit by sterling volatility last year. So we decided we'd move to dollars. We've done that. We're considering the next move, which is move to US GAAP. This is really boring stuff, but US GAAP. <laughs> US GAAP gives, it's a harsher uh, accounting standard, but it's much clearer for us demonstrating how we're doing as a business and we'll simplify our, our account. So that's the next move. We're not declared it, but we're working hard on it. We're just looking to see if there's any, any problems with it. In terms of your question regarding a listing, it's the last yeah. thing we will look at. And it's the least important. The most important thing is your first question You know, what's happening to our revenues, what's happening to our cash flow and profits. Those are going very well, and that is what I focus in. The listing, moving it, is a very small consideration somewhere down the track. If the conditions are right, if it will give our investors a better outcome, then the board may consider to do that. But it's not going to change the trading. It may change the multiple. Okay, thank you so much for that.